It has never been easier to start using AI as a .NET developer. In this video, I'll show you how you can run a large language model locally using Olama and consume it from your .NET application. The current state of AI in the .NET ecosystem is a set of libraries that you can use to easily interact with large language models. The base library is Microsoft Extensions AI, and it exposes a simple interface that allows you to interact with LLMs. Now, there are specific implementations of these LLMs that you can plug into your project. The most popular one is Semantic Kernel, but there are also implementations for interacting with OpenAI, Azure AI services, and of course, Olama, which I'm going to demonstrate in this video. If you aren't familiar with Olama, it's a platform that allows you to easily run large language models locally. And from the Olama website, you can take a look at all of the available models. We're going to be using Llama Free Model, but there are a lot of them to choose from. So I'm going to leave the research up to you. Now let's head into the code and see how we can actually start working with this. I'll start from a blank console application. And the first thing we're going to do is to look for some NuGet packages. So let's look for Microsoft Extensions AI. And this is the base library that allows you to interface with large language models. Now there is also Microsoft Extensions AI Olama, which is a specific implementation for working with Olama models. So let's install that. And I'm also going to install Microsoft Extensions AI. Now, how do we actually use these libraries? I'm going to start by creating a host builder. I installed the Microsoft Extensions hosting package and I'm going to say create application builder. And I'm going to add a new service. It's going to be a chat client. And this is the extension method that's exposed by Microsoft Extensions AI. Now, this accepts an implementation of a chat client. And because we have Olama installed, there is an Olama chat client implementation. This accepts a URI or an endpoint where you can access the large language model. Now I'm going to be running this locally. So I'll specify localhost 11434, which is the default port where I'm going to be running my service. The second argument here is the ID of the model that you want to be using and I'll be using the Llama free model. And this is all I want to add to my service container. So now I can say builder and say build and I'll get back a host where I can access the service provider and get back the chat client service. So with the chat client resolved from dependency injection, I can start interacting with my large language model. If you take a look at what's available on the chat client, the two most important methods are complete async and complete streaming async. The streaming API might be more efficient, but it returns an async enumerable. I'll just use complete async for this demo. And what can you do here? You can either pass in a list of chat messages, and this is useful if you want to track the message history. But let's say I want to pass in a simple question. For example, what is .NET? We're going to await this. And this is going to give us back a chat completion response. And then I can write the contents of this response using console write line. And what I'm interested in is the chat completion. And then I want to access the message and then the text property. And this is probably the simplest AI application that you can write in .NET in just a couple of lines of code. So I think the abstractions that we have for working with large language models are absolutely amazing. Now, how do we actually run Olama locally? You can run Olama in a Docker container. Here's the command that you should execute. And I'm just saying docker run, specifying a volume for the Olama container, exposing it locally on port 11,434, giving a name to my Olama container. And then finally, this is the image that I want to be using. It's Olama slash Olama latest. And after executing this, it's going to start the Olama container in the background. If you have something like Docker desktop, you should be able to see the Olama service starting. And then the next thing you will need is the actual large language model that you want to be running. You will have to download this into your container and you can execute this command to pull the Llama free model into the Olama instance. As I said, there are many other models that you can explore. Some are more powerful, some are less powerful, but I'll leave it up to you to explore which model you should be using. Now let's assume that all of this is working behind the scenes and let's start our application. It may take a moment or two to get a response back from the LLM, but eventually it's going to reply and we're going to write a response into the console. Before executing this, I'm just going to update the prompt slightly to say that it should reply in 50 words max. So let's go ahead and run this. 
is going to start up the application, reach out to Olama that's running in the background, and give us back the response. And it says that .NET is a software framework developed by Microsoft, yada, yada, yada. So I'm not going to read everything. Now, this is the simplest way how you can interact with a large language model. Now, being able to send just one message isn't all too useful, right? What is more useful is being able to go back and forth while maintaining the chat history. So how you can do that is by creating a list that contains your chat messages. This is a type from Microsoft Extensions AI. And basically you can create an infinite loop where you're going to read the prompt from the console, add that to the chat history, and then ask the large language model for a reply. So in this case, I'm using the complete streaming async method. And when I get a reply back, I'm going to add it to the chat history. So let's go ahead and run this. And we're going to be asked for a prompt. So let's say, what is .NET? reply in 20 words max. And we're going to get back a response streamed from the LLM. And what's important here is that it's going to continue having the context of the entire conversation. So now I can ask it something like, is .NET cross-platform? And it's going to give me back a response saying that it is cross-platform. And because I didn't limit the number of words that I should get back as a reply, it's going to have a more detailed response. And now I can continue having the conversation, but this is just a simple chat interface. Now let's try to actually build something useful using the large language model. So let me add another example. I have a post folder inside of this project that contains five of my articles written as markdown documents. So what I'm going to do is scan this folder, find the files inside, and load them into an array. And then I'm going to loop through each of my files and I'm going to create a more detailed prompt. I'm going to feed this prompt into the large language model and then print out the result. Now inside of this prompt, I'm going to ask it to read the contents of my file, which I'm going to pass in here. And I want it to analyze the text and extract the title of the article and the summary as a JSON document. So I'm specifically asking for the message to be a JSON reply. So if I go ahead and run this, it's going to scan my folder, find the files that I have available, and it's going to give me back the response from the large language model. So from what I can see here, the titles are pretty correct. And then you can see the summary of this article as a JSON document. Now what's interesting to note is that each iteration doesn't necessarily mean I will get the same response. For example, the first response here contains a note while the second one doesn't. Sometimes it completely fails to give you a response, so you can see it just copied the contents of my prompt without actually giving me the article summary. But for the most part, it works as you would expect it to. Now, obviously, if I had a more powerful model, we would get back a better response. Now, what's something else you can do? So instead of getting back a text message, I can actually constrain the model to give me back a strongly typed response. Here's what that would look like. So it's a similar prompt to what I had before. I'm still asking it to reply with a JSON document that contains a title, but this time I want to have a set of tags that are essentially categorizing the contents of my article. So it's a bit more interesting than just summarizing the article. Now notice that I'm specifying a type in the complete async method call. I created a simple post category class that contains the title and the tags, and this is the exact response that I want to get back from the large language model. So let's run this, and I'm just going to print this out as text in the console. And you can see that it's going to give me back the article titles and some tags that it thinks are relevant for the article's contents. So for the most part, this works as you would expect. Now, you don't have to use the text. You are actually going to get back a result object that represents the post category instance. And then you can do with it whatever you want. So let's say I print the title and then the tags. And if I run this, I should get a more structured response where I can see the title of this article and the tags that were generated by Olama. Let me know in the comments if I should do more videos about working with large language models in .NET. If you want to grab the source code for this video, the link is going to be in the description right below. Check out my courses to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.